ladies and gentlemen, to an all-new reaction and review. Tonight, guys, I'm taking a look at a dark comedy from 1998. That movie is Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels. Now, the only things I know about, about this movie, guys, are, one, it is directed, and I believe also written, uh, yes, it is written and directed by the same guy who put out Snatch. And for those of you who uh, don't know, Snatch is by far one of my favorite dark comedies ever made. So, so thanks to Snatch, I do know, I do know that Guy fucking Richie can do dark comedy really well. However, I also know that he made Lockstock here before he made Snatch. So I'm going so I'm going to take a guess that this thing's probably not going to be as polished or as well written as Snatch. Mind you, it's still very well could be. However, though, I do have a feeling that what I am what I am getting into here isn't going to be as good as that marvelous film I first saw about two years ago. So Guys, not only am I wondering if is this thing as good as Snatch, I'm wondering just if this thing is any good at all, because I really have no earthly clue. The only way, I, the only way I'm going to find out if there's anything good about about this movie, the only way I'm going to find out if this thing is even half as good as Snatch, is if I shut up and I push play, and I'm going to do that right now. So, without further ado, it's time to kick back, relax, and check out Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels. You know, guys, I was really hoping for the humor in this in this movie to be as tight and as, you know, well-written as it was in Snatch, but so far, a whole lot of these jokes... Now, mind you, now, mind you, now, like, none of them suck, but they're all kind of falling a little bit flat. I was really genuinely expecting better. Wow, and, uh... Now, guys, this movie's gone from having jokes that were kind of flat to being kind of boring. Guys, I really wanted wanted to love this movie. I'm I am genuinely hoping that it that it picks up in the you know like latter half of the movie, but so far this thing's kind of sucked. So we were just told a story. Most of which apparently was told in some kind of slang so thick we needed subtitles for it. The story ultimately kind of sucked. Which unfortunately seems, seems kind of to be the pattern for this movie is everything just kind of sucks. Again guys, I'm really hoping for it, for it to pick up. And I do understand we're getting late, late in the film, but still... It would be nice if this would at least get a little bit better. Well, guys, it took, well, guys, it took, you know, this movie almost a fucking hour, but it's actually gotten funny. We actually have a scene that's genuinely entertaining. And at this point, I'm really happy to, to have at least found something that's genuinely good. Well, guess what, dude? I also am not fucking laughing because this movie has really failed at almost every turn to be genuinely funny. And it's slowly getting harder to watch, guys. You know, guys, I honestly am just happy to see that this movie is almost over. I, I really am. I have nothing else to really say. I'm just happy to see that this movie is finally friggin' winding, you know, y you know, down, and it'll be done real soon. Which is sad, because once more, I need to stress, I wanted to like this thing. I was promised that this movie was going to be great. The person who told me that is a horrible liar. My god, this thing has just been a chore. Well, guys, that was Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels. God, that was nowhere near as good as I was hoping. Let's shut that off. Okay, well, um, 
I'm going to get the easy part done with first. I want to get this out of the way and done with be, 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 before it winds up taking over the entire re review of this. Uh, when I put this thing on the wish list, the person who told me to put it on the list, also the person who wound up sending it in, told me, straight up, it's just as good as Snatch. Because it's from the same guy who worked on Snatch. Person even told me, hey, it's probably better than Snatch. No, no, it's not. Not even close. Not even in the same ballpark as Snatch. This thing is inferior in every single way, save possibly for the soundtrack. All right, if there was anything I had to say uh, that Lock that Lockstock has over Snatches, Lockstock's soundtrack is marginally better. That isn't saying much, though. So now that I've got that out of the way, uh, just to close out on that. If someone tells you to pick between Lockstock and Two Smoking Barrels or Snatch, take Snatch any day of the fucking week, all right? It's the it's the vastly superior film in terms of writing, characters, pacing, humor, everything is better in Snatch. Now, hopefully I won't now hopefully from this point on, I'm not going to make comparisons to Snatch. Because, trust me, I could probably bang on about, about that for a couple of hours. Anyway, let's talk, though, about the movie I just finished watching. Huh? Um, writing. Writing. Oh, boy. Um, see, guys, what makes a lot of these sorts of movies, what, what makes a lot of dark, dark comedies work is when your characters are memorable. When your characters have some level of personality... And nobody here really has that. Like the closest we have is we have is we have Vinnie Jones's character, uh, who's essentially who is who is who is essentially hired 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 muscle, who does what he does so that way he can support his son. That's it. That's really guys as close as we have to any genuine character in this film. Everybody else is just sort of there because we need people to be there. And um, there is almost no personality between anybody else. Honest to God. Every other character feels so... They all just feel so friggin' samey that, that I personally wound up not caring when about 98% of the cast is killed off. I didn't care because none of them who die had any had any real personality. I could I couldn't tell you a single one of their names. All right, I do not I do not remember a single name in this film except for Alan, who's be who is played by who is played by Alan Ford. That's the only reason why I even know the character's name. That and the character's name is mentioned incredibly late late in late in the film. And I should mention that Alan, that Alan Ford actually sort of gets off with the uh, with the best role in this film because he is on camera for all of two scenes and he spends the first half of the film essentially narrating, trying his damnedest to make us care about these shallow, lifeless characters. And you know what? Bless him, bless, bless him, he tried. Bless him as a narrator. He tried to make us care about every one of these lifeless, pointless, idiotic characters. However, it still was not enough, and we wind up with a film that runs almost two hours. We have all of one character who has who has, who has any kind of who has any kind of motivation which, which goes above and beyond uh, trying to either sell weed or steal weed or steal money or steal guns. Uh, by the way, guys, yeah, honest to God, that that really is the entire film is just this big fight for a gigantic duffel bag of cash, a mountain of fucking weed, and two antique guns. And, you know, all of that sounds as if it would have been really good. And it would have been if our characters were built up in any fucking way. But, instead we are, in, instead we are left with a premise that sounds really promising, and uh, should have by all rights of work, 
but it is completely kneecapped again by the fact that we have these ultra shallow characters and uh, the entire movie suffers because of it. Our dialogue, our dialogue is trying its damnedest to be clever and to be witty and to be, you know, just really, really, you know, like snappy and quick. And it's trying so hard that it just cannot succeed. And because of that, once more, the movie suffers and it suffers greatly. Um, really, guys, the biggest fault that this movie has is its writing. Because at no time is the viewer going to find a reason to care about the characters or about any of the situations. Which, I am just going to discount all of that because this was Guy Ritchie's first feature-length film. Alright? And you cannot expect people to come, to, come, to come firing on all cylinders their first time out. There is bound to be flaws. However... That still does not stop the fact that, that the movie borders borders on being almost unwatchable because the writing is so bland and so flat and so dull. Now, even though, guys, the acting... I mean, now, now, even though the writing and the characters and the dialogue are all so flat, the actors actually turned in a really good showing here, okay? And I cannot... I cannot fault fault the actors here. Every single one of them... Every single one of them turned in the best possible showing with the script given. And that is still incredibly good. Okay? And I don't want anyone I don't want anyone to think that I am going to start, you know, dumping on the acting. It, I I really can't. The acting here was genuinely good. And I really can't think of anybody who turned in, you know, a bad a bad showing. I, I can say, though, that I think everybody would have turned in a vastly, a vastly better showing if they were given a better script to work with. Instead, instead they, 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 they basically had to polish, polish, polish this turd the best that they could. And damn it, every single one of them were able to polish it, were, were, were able to polish it as well as they possibly could have. So yeah, guys, the acting here is decent. The soundtrack here, well, most of the soundtrack is decent uh, because it has a habit of dipping into James Brown, which is awesome because I'm a fan of James Brown's music. However, it then also dips into this like, like grunge-ish kind of crap that sounds really shit. However, I'm also not a fan of grunge, so you know there is that. Um, and when you try to mix those 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 two genres, you would almost think that the soundtrack would would wind up sounding absolutely terrible. But it it actually kind of works. The scenes now, the scenes which use the like grunge-ish, punkish kind of sound. It works for those scenes, and the scenes when they are using the jazzier, uh, like, R&B-ish James Brown stuff, it works. So yeah, guys, the, so yeah, guys, the music here is fitting, and that is really the best that you can ask whenever someone's putting a soundtrack on, on, onto a film. You have to at least ask that the music be fitting, and the music works here, alright? It does. Even though, now, even though I myself did not like... Did, you know, even though I didn't like some of the musical picks, it those now those selections still worked for for the film, and they did help set the tone of the movie. So yeah, that works. Camera work here is really good, but I have to comment on film processing because you see, guys, I'm looking here at the back of the Blu-ray uh, case here, and. Everything here, every single shot, is colored perfectly. I actually can see skin tones, and I can see reds and blues and everything else. Everything here is colored perfectly. Why is it then that, that as I watched the film, the whole fucking thing looks as if the film was dipped, was dipped in tea before it was processed? Everything has this nasty orange, orange fucking filter over it, and it looks terrible. And the very fact, guys, that this thing here is on Blu-ray, and they could have digitally gone in and corrected, corrected the color to make it fucking look less, less hideous, is really... And the fact that they didn't do that, the fact that they did not bother to 
Okay, the fact that they didn't bother to fix to fix the to, to fix the color in the film while fixing it on the stills on the back of the case is absolutely disgusting. And that guys is another issue with this film is is the fact that everything's got this nasty nasty orange color over it and it looks just ugly. It really does and it makes the whole thing kind of kind of difficult difficult to watch. On top of the writing being, you know, boring as shit, but I'm not going to bang on the writing drum anymore, I promise. Um I never thought guys I, I would have to comment on on a film's color, but holy shit, this thing looks awful. And once more, guys, this thing here, it, and it even claims at the very top here, perfect picture and purest digital sound available. Okay, well, you know what? The sound honestly was fairly decent. But perfect picture? No. Fuck you. Perfect picture would have been if the movie didn't didn't fucking look as it... it, it perfect picture would have been if, if the movie didn't, didn't look as if... The film was was fucking you know seeped in tea. Okay, it doesn't work. It looks terrible. So okay, yeah, guys, we have two major fucking negatives: the color and the writing. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Camera work here is decent, and the sound and the sound mix is fine. Really, guys, this whole thing is brought down by writing and the color. And mind you, guys, color is a really minor, minor issue that most people are not going to give a shit about. But it honestly was enough to bother me, so I felt the need to mention it. So guys, when all is said and done, am I able to recommend Lock, Lock Stock and Two Smoking Barrels? Not, no, I really can't. I, I honestly cannot recommend this, uh, especially when I know that there are far better movies out there, such as Snatch. Yes, guys, I'm going to once more bang on the whole comparison with this thing and Snatch. Why? Because once more, the person who sent this in, and yeah, I am going to say, Lock, Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels came off the Amazon wish list. The person who sent it in was the person who sent me Snatch, and that is Kari. And Kari swore, swore, swore to me, up and down, this thing was as good, if not better, than Snatch. She also said that it was more, and she, and she also said that it was similar. And I was almost guaranteed to like it. Well, Kari, I'm sorry, but no. This the the this movie is shallow. It's dull, and uh, again, the color just is just is just eye is just eye bleedingly bad. Um, <laughs> but yes, guys, uh, Kari, thank you because I wouldn't have known about the about the horrible writing or the terrible color if you hadn't have sent it in. And guys, if you could please swing over to Kari's to Kari's Let's Play channel, I am going to I'm going to provide a link for you. Um, Go over there and check out and check out everything which is over there. And if you guys like it, please by all means sub. And uh, you know what? I am going to go and watch you know Snatch. Why? Because somebody told me that this fucker was supposed to be as good as Snatch. And god damn it, I had my expectations set for something that good. So that means that if I have to go and watch Snatch in order to get those sorts of results, I am going to. That, and I still love Snatch, so I'm going to go and watch that, guys. And um, with that, we come to the close of another reaction and review. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, take care, and I will see you all in the near future. Peace.